In this video, I'm, go I'm gonna talk about the attribute in request scope. So I just have my project set up already. Um, if you still have doubt on how to set up a Spring MVC project, you can look at my previous videos. I will put a link in the description so you can just copy and paste to watch it. And uh, so let's start. I have a request scope attribute controller here. Uh, I add annotation controller to make sure Spring gonna initialize for me. Now I'm gonna have a method called uh, gate. Let's call um, uh, request attribute. How about that? I'm not good at giving a good name in this case. Okay, uh, get mapping. Okay, when I make a call or when the application starts, it's gonna go to this method. And uh, for this method, let me add a model first. Okay, and I'm gonna return to request scope attribute attribute gsp page i already have my gsp page ready but actually there's nothing inside right so next step is how to put an attribute in request scope if you watched my other videos probably you already know add attribute okay let's call channel name okay this channel is called uh, miss XRNG. Okay. So when you in Spring MVC, when you write this piece of statement, it's gonna add Miss XRNG into the request scope. How to retrieve it is using the key channel name. This is identical, not identical, this is the same as you using HB server request. Okay, request, and you're using request dot set attribute and you give a key so key let me using author name okay it's rujanxing so this one this one is put an attribute author name and this is value into request scope this one is the spring mvc way to put attribute into request scope and behind the thing, actually Spring MVC gonna call request.set attribute. It doesn't have its own implementation of request scope. It's gonna use in this one, okay? So now let me go to the GSP page to actually display the two names, okay? One is the model attribute, the other one is using request scope to set the attribute, a uh, request object. So the first one is I using Spring, Spring, MVC way to set uh, attribute in request scope by using model. Okay, then I'm gonna give the value here channel name, and the second way is using plan, is in plan HTTP servlet. API to set attribute in request scope. Okay, and this one I did, I forgot the name uh, key, it's author name, okay. So that's, let me redeploy the application and uh, then see if everything works. And I have to switch back to switch to Chrome so I can show you um, I can show you the behavior in the Chrome okay go to the Chrome now I'm gonna make a call to the request attribute controller enter see uh, this is the channel name this is the author name and it retrieved the 
attributed in the request scope uh, successfully. So let me refresh, uh, go through the code with you again. When you add into the request scope and uh, what when you return this JSP page, it's gonna be a forward. Okay, so forward happens on the server side, which means the URL doesn't change. Okay, and the request attribute will carry it to this next uh, request. And which means the request scope is still available in this JSP page. And uh, I'm gonna make a slightly change, like a string. Uh, display request attribute and then this statement I'm gonna put it here and then here I add a get mapping called display okay now I want to when I make a call to this slash I want to this request that we are forward to this get mapping request. How to do that? Return, add the keyword forward, and then slash display. Good. In this case, when I make a request to this slash, on the server side, it's gonna forward to this method but they share the same request scope and the URL in the browser bar, the URL, the URL remains no change. So you will still see slash, not a slash display. And in the GSP, you can still see the values because it's a forward. Let me redeploy and show you. I got this uh, idea from my students and they told me you don't need to re, uh, start a server every time because it's gonna take longer. You just can redeploy the application so it's uh, faster. So now it's uh, redeployed successfully. I'm gonna switch back to the Chrome. And here I'm gonna make a call again, okay? So I can do is another browser bar tab. And you can see, you can still retrieve the attribute in the request scope and the browser bar, the URL doesn't change because forward happened on the server side. And let me change a little bit so you can see the request scope doesn't carry it to the next request. If I change it forward to redirect, okay, I change it to redirect. That's the only thing I change. And what's gonna happen is when you use redirect, browser will make another request to slash display. And when the browser make a new request, the request scope is the fresh one. So you can no longer retrieve channel name and author name in this request. Let me redeploy. And it's done. So I'm gonna switch to the browser. And I'm gonna do is just click enter. You will see nothing being displayed here. And if you take a look at the URL carefully, this URL is changed. Because redirect is gonna have two calls. It's gonna make a second call to this URL. And because you make a new call, the, it's gonna consider as a new request, okay? The request object and the response object gonna be the brand new. So the previous attribute are not carried to current request. That's the reason you will see nothing here. And you might see something strange here. You have a channel name, attached as a query string and uh, this is something related to redirect okay let me show you in the IntelliJ to explain so when you have a redirect and if you're using model to add some attribute okay by default setting if the value is a primitive type 
or it's a string type, it's gonna automatically append as the query string. So let me add another one for you, add attribute. And suppose here, let's use year, okay? And uh, this is uh, an integer, right? And uh, this is a primitive type. But uh, if I create an object, let's add uh, one more, let me add a uh, model, okay? Package model. Let me add a model. Let's call customer. Okay, customer. And I have a private uh, int id. Private string, which is a name, custom name. Let me provide the getter setters. Okay. And uh, uh, I also provide a constructor. The, the first one is uh, default construct. The second one, I'm, I'm gonna provide a constructor with the two fields. And then I'm gonna go back to our controller. Here, I will create a new customer, okay? Customer. Let me import cust equals new customer one and uh, name is called uh, Tina. And then we're using model as attribute cust. Okay, cust. Let me using customer and for the key. So here, this channel name, year, customer, all of them are in request scope. The difference is the value. This channel name, the value is a string type. The, this year, the value is the integer. And the customer, oh, sorry, the customer, the value is an object. So when we use redirect, if the value for the attribute is a string or primitive type, then it's gonna append in the redirect URL as a query string. But if it's an object, it's not going to append. Let me redeploy and show you. So you will see missing and 2019, but you want to see this customer. So deployed successfully. Let me switch to the browser. And I'm going to refresh, make a call to the slash and can you see here you will see channel name and the year are append as query string but that customer are not appended here and this is the default setting inside the, the when you have a redirect okay let me switch back okay now here has another tree, uh, another small like uh, tip. Suppose I just give A, B, C here. Okay, I just give a value. What's the key for that? Then you have to take a look at what's the type of this value. If this type is a string, then it's gonna have how to retrieve it. It's gonna be string equals A, B, C. So if I add a model dot add attribute uh, to be 12.0 and 12.0 uh, is a double type and in the query string it's gonna be look like this equals 12.0 uh, so you can give uh, explicitly to give a key or you can just give the value if you give it the value the key gonna be the type of this value and make sure the first letter is a lowercase okay because abc the type is a string right and you have to make sure it's a lowercase and the, this type is a double and make sure the key the first letter is a lowercase and suppose you don't want to this kind of behavior you also can to disable it how to disable it you have to do configuration where's the configuration go to the xml 
and then here has something called uh, ignore default mode on redirect that's using true okay then let me rerun uh, redeploy Deploy, uh, deploy successfully. Now let me switch back to the Chrome. And I'm gonna open a new tab. Gonna open a new tab, then enter. So you can see you have a display, but uh, those uh, query string like a channel name and year are not here anymore. Uh, hope you understand uh, after watching this video about the attribute in request scope and uh, in my next video I'm gonna introduce the session scope if you are interested and you can go and watch it thank you for watching uh, see you next time